Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Cling Lady and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create super cool 3D paper purse box. If you like it, I really hope you'll enjoy today's tutorial and create something beautiful with me today. For today's project, I'm going to use Spring into Easter set 2 collection from Paul Cadoodles. And I'm going to use SVG file from Jennifer Maker, which I'll leave in the description down below. And I'm also going to cut some of the elements from purple cut to create the base for my purse. So now it will be time to use that SVG file and create all those elements. So here they are. As you can see, there are not that many and you can always use any square or rectangle to create your purse as well. This one has slightly angle to it and I really, really like it. I'm using my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, to assemble all the elements together. And as you can see, these papers work so well with that purple, so I thought that would be the best way to put all those elements. In that SVG file from Jennifer Maker, you also have other elements to embellish your purses with. But to be honest, I didn't use all of them, I just used some of them because I wanted to use amazing image Digistam from Polka Doodles, which I'm going to show you later on. So as you can see, those elements come together very quickly. And if you'd like to know anything about Polka Doodles design papers I use here or any other designs I'm going to show you later on in the video, all the names and the links are in the description down below, so yes, you can check them out. So now it will be time to move on. And I'm going to add here that beautiful spring into Easter set to design paper inside of the bag as well. There is a reason, because when you open the bag, it will be beautiful inside out. And that's exactly what I wanted for this box. Have you ever created a 3D purse box? If you haven't, maybe today is the day. As you can see, now it is time to create the base, the bottom base for our purse. And I'm using my bone folder to actually create those flaps here. There are some score lines here when I use my scan and cut machine to create that element. And now we need those side panels. So this way our purse will be 3D. And to be honest, this project comes together very quickly. And you can use it for so many different occasions, especially with that design paper from Polka Doodles. If you do like Polka Doodles, I really wonder which design paper collection or digi stamp is your favorite. Darling Buds for me is my totally number one. If you haven't seen my other videos using this collection, I'm going to leave some videos throughout this video here. But also, I'll leave them at the end so you can check them out later on. As you can see, I'm putting a little bit of liquid glue and this is the best option because you can always maneuver the elements if you make a mistake. And actually creating that 3D project using liquid glue, it makes it so much easier. So at this point, I decided to have that orange design paper inside of the card. And I think that would be perfect. So first, as you can see, I'm putting that purple here. And now I'm going to hide that flap, but actually I'm going to adhere all the other elements as well. So here is the flap that will go at the top of the bag. And it has a score line here. But what you can also do, you can use your fingers to create a curve. And to be honest, I should do it the first thing before I adhered it to the base. But don't worry, you can always do it. And that's what I'm going to do later on. So now I'm going to hide the tab at the very bottom and no one will ever see it. So you can use that technique or you can adhere it first thing and that will be perfectly fine. Now I've got one more rectangle that will go at the bottom of the bag. And this way we are going to make it stronger. So it means you can actually put something really nice inside of the bag. So what occasion would you like to use that paper purse box? 
please let me know in the comments down below. I chose a sentiment that will go for literally any occasion. But maybe that would be a good gift for a hands party. I don't know. If you have different ideas, please let me know in the comments down below. And whenever you put too much glue on the flaps, you can always use your finger to smudge it a little bit. And it's always a good idea to actually wait until the glue is set before you move on to the next step. And this bag is super cool. In real life, it literally looks stunning. So if you do have Scan and Cut or Cricut Machine, check that SVG file from Jennifer Maker. Actually, on her website, she's got quite a lot of purse boxes. And they are so easy to make. I think the biggest struggle, which is always my struggle, is to actually choose the design papers. Now I decided to use some magnets and these come from Crafters Companion and this way that flap will be closed all the time. But actually you can move it because we're going to use magnets and as you can see it is a very strong one. So it will be time to adhere them on my project. Have you ever used magnets in your projects? If you have, what did you use it for? I'm really curious. And if you do have a really good tip how to adhere magnets on your projects, I would absolutely love to know. Here I'm using my red liner tape because I think it is pretty good. But is it the best option? Please let me know about your thoughts. So here I'm going to adhere the first magnet on the front panel. And then we are going to hide it as well. So I've got another embellishment that will go at the top of the front. And again, I'm using my magic glue because I do have that time to maneuver the elements and I will make sure everything is in line. So now it will be time to put uh, the magnet. And again, I'm going to use my red liner tape. If you do have better option, please let me know in the comments down below. So if you have created boxes before, what shape did they take? I'm really curious. I really like to make boxes, especially with my scoring board, but actually using SVG files, literally the possibilities are endless. So now it will be time to put the side panels with the front panel. And this way our back will be nearly completed. But there is always a way to make your project even more special. And when you look at Paul Cadoodle's website, there are actually so many stunning design collections that you can print over and over again. And when you sign into the newsletter, you get so many coupon codes. And on Tuesday, it was 40% off, which is absolutely stunning. So if there is a collection or digi designs you'd like to have, always subscribe to the newsletter for Polka Doodles. Because first of all, the projects are stunning. All the collections have amazing images and projects. And second, all those discount counts are super, super cool. Now it is time to embellish the front and I'm going to use one of my favorite digi stamps. And this one is called Tulip. It comes from Darling Buds Collection. And I'm going to use my Tri-Blend Brush Markers from Spectre Noir. And this one is called Winter Holiday Set. I really like it and I thought that would give me very nice contrast with that pale purple on the purse. But this purple is different. It is more into magenta color, which I think it is so cool. And with those Brush Tri-Blend Markers, as you can see, you've got three different colors inside, which means you can blend very quickly and beautifully. And also, I'm going to use that beautiful uh, green turquoise blend to add the color on all the leaves. And this way, the contrast will be even more visible. Often do you like coloring images for your projects? If you do have your favorite technique, please let me know in the comments down below. I think tri-blend markers are so easy to work with and you always get that beautiful blend here. But to be honest, the trick is to use the proper paper 
because on some of the textured papers or watercolor papers, those alcohol markers won't really work. So you always have to make sure you use the paper for the project. And now, as you can see, for the flower in the middle on the head, I decided to use darker colors. But with the flowers on the left and on the right, I'm only using the mid color and the light. So this way you also have that color variation. And that's what I really like. So basically, I only use two pens here. But later on, I'm also going to use different pen for the skin color. But you can use whatever you've got in your stash. If you have alcohol markers, they are amazing because you can always mix and match all those brands. And when you have zig markers or watercolor markers, you always get that watercolor effect. So please experiment with your supplies because whenever you create any handmade project, they are always very special. But if you do use your coloring medium, that will be even better. So as you can see, this image comes together very quickly. And as I told you, this one is called Tulip. And I wonder, what is your favorite flower? I really like sunflowers, but actually parrot tulip is absolutely stunning flower. I really like it. And I wonder, have you ever seen parrot tulips? If you haven't, look them up. They are stunning, absolutely stunning. And the color variation on them is amazing. So if you do have your favorite flower, do you make projects with it? I'm really curious what is your favorite flower and how often do you use it to create your handmade projects. So as you can see, now I'm adding some more shadows on the dress and using that darker color on my tri-blend brush marker, it is so, so easy. All you have to do first is just to make sure all the elements were set and dry before you added another layer of alcohol marker. So it, uh, it is time to use your scissors to fussy cut it and it will be ready to put it on our project. So now let's do it. I'm going to put her on the right hand side so I still have some space on the left. And at this point I thought can I embellish that purse even more? What do we like about purses? We absolutely love to have some pockets. So that was the idea here. I'm going to create a small pocket that will go at the front on the left hand side. I still have that space so I can use it, right? And as you can see, I use different design paper from that Spring into Easter set to collection. But in the end, all those design papers work so well together. Now it is time to add that purple at the top as well so it will match the bag. And I really like how it looks like. But we always need something extra. As it is a purse, we also need some straps. So I thought, is there a way I can make the straps even better? So later on, I'm also going to use gold mirror card. But first, let's add a sentiment and just to make sure it matches that beautiful tulip on the right, I'm going to use the same alcohol marker to create the border around my sentiment. So at this point, you don't need any inks to do it. Now it will be time to adhere the sentiment on the pocket here. And it will be time to move on and add some straps. So use the same purple card. And this one actually comes from the little. It is pretty thick. It's over 200 GSM. And I thought that would be perfect to create that box card. And as you can see, I'm trying how to put that embellishment or buckle here. So I like this way. So let's keep it that way. So as you can see, that gold mirror card really stands out on that purple. So I thought that would be the best way. If you have ever created a purse box, what kind of style was it? I'm really, really curious. I created a couple of them in the past. You don't always need SVG file or template. Sometimes scoring board is enough. So yes, I do have that video on my channel as well, which I'll try to link at the top right corner here. So these straps come together super quickly. And to be honest, I really like how this project turned out. 
you can put some sweets inside or maybe something extra as well. So you can use it for any occasion that you like. And as I told you, Polka Doodle's website is absolutely amazing. They've got digi stamps and digi design papers for any occasion. So please have a look at the website because I'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed. And as you can see, with the straps, I decided to put them inside and outside. So this way, this project will be professionally finished. And as you can see, I put lots of glue at the top of the straps, but I haven't closed the straps yet. So all I have to do at the moment is to actually create longer straps. And I've got four of them. So I'm going to adhere two at the same time to create one strap. But first, it's a good idea to use your fingers to create that curve before you assemble them on your project. So this way it will be so cool. And trust me, it is worth that time. So when this is ready, then I can actually adhere those longer straps inside the straps we created with buckles. And when you add that glue, I do encourage you to use your fingers again to create that curve. And when it dries, it will be that permanent curve, which I really like because it is super cool when it comes to paper bags, boxes, right? And if you do have your favorite card to create boxes, I really, really wonder which one is it. Last year, I got loads of card from the Lidl. I still have plenty of stash. And I think it is perfect because it is pretty thick and it makes any boxes look very good. Now, as you can see, I can use that glue that's inside the smaller straps and I can always add more. And it's always a good idea to actually hold those elements for a couple of seconds just to make sure the glue is set. If you want, you can also use some pegs to hold those elements together when they dry and that will be perfectly fine. Now it is time to put that strap at the front of the bag and it will be nearly complete. So what do you think about this project? And what do you think about that tulip image from Darling Bats collection? Do you like it? Or would you change the color combo for this project? I really, really wonder what you think. So now when the glue is set, we can check if the magnets work and the project is complete. So what do you think about it? Do you like it? I really, really wonder, would you like to give it a go? So if you do want to give it a go, check the description down below where I left the link to Jennifer Maker with that SVG file collection and I also left the links to all Paul Cadudo's design papers and digi stamps I use in today's video. Have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching and spending that time with me. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting. Bye.